hello good morning students so <clears throat> today we are going to see about xerox uh, conjunctiva and in that we will see particular about uh, vitamin a deficiencies vitamin a so already we have completed in conjunctiva the symptomatic conditions of conjunctiva then conjunctivitis in conjunctivitis we have finished uh, bacterial conjunctivitis happy hyperacute conjunctivitis of adult ophthalmia neonatorum then allergic conjunctivitis and viral conjunctivitis so today i am going to take a different topic that is a xerosis of conjunctiva because of hypovitaminosis and the last topic will be pterygium so in symptomatic conditions of conjunctiva we have seen xerosis of conjunctiva so xerosis of the conjunctiva is a symptomatic condition in which conjunctiva becomes dry and lusterless normal conjunctiva is kept moist by its own secretions mucin from goblet cells or goblet cells and aqueous solution from accessory lacrimal glands therefore even if the main lacrimal gland is removed xerosis does not occur so depending upon the etiology we are having a two types of xerosis the first one is parenchymatous xerosis the second is epithelial xerosis the parenchymatous xerosis occurs following cicatricial disorganization of the conjunctiva due to local causes which can be in the form of widespread destructive interstitial conjunctivitis this is seen in trachoma diphtheric membranous conjunctivitis steven johnson syndrome or sj syndrome you can uh, tell in short form pempigus or pempigoid conjunctivitis then the second type is exposure of conjunctivitis due to air as seen in marked degree of proptosis facial palsy ectropion lack of blinking as in coma and lack of thermos so all these can cause a parenchymatous xerosis today we are seeing the topic that is a epithelial xerosis because of hypovitaminosis a epithelial xerosis may be seen in association with night blindness or as a part of a parcel of xerophthalmia the term is applied to all ocular manifestations of vitamin a deficiency which range from night blindness to keratomalacia so for parenchymatous xerosis we can give treatment of the cause and symptomatic local treatment that is a artificial tears so today we will see first what is vitamin a or what is vitamins vitamins are essential nutrients and are required by the body in a very small amount they fall in the category of micronutrients vitamins do not yield energy they are required by the body to enable it to use other nutrients as body is unable to synthesize the vitamins these are to be provided by the food a well balanced diet provides vitamins in sufficient quantity to keep the body healthy deficiency of vitamin due to either less intake or malabsorption results in manifestation of symptoms of deficiency that is vitamin deficiency fat soluble vitamins as you are know they are vitamin a d e and vitamin k they are fat soluble vitamins vitamin a is available in two forms retinol that is called as a pre formed vitamin a and beta carotene one international unit of vitamin a is equivalent to 0.3 microgram of retinol this is the chart that is showing you vitamin a in two forms vitamin a measured in international unit one international unit is 0.3 microgram of retinol availability of vitamin a through the plant foods that is in your 10 standard or 12 standards all you have learned that is green leafy vegetables they are having abundant amount of vitamin a the highest source is in spinach and amaranth then some roots that is carrots yellow fruits papaya mango and pumpkins the vitamin a is available as a beta carotene and it converts to retinol in intestine 
daily requirement for the school children adolescent and adult is 2250 international unit for the children of the age of 0 to 4 years it is 1000 to 2000 international unit and in pregnancy and lactation it is 3000 to 3500 international unit this is a daily requirement daily the rose laganara vitamin e quantity then the vegetable as all of you know that dark green leaf vegetables in picture the carrot is shown animal sources that is liver meat cod liver oil egg yolk this contains vitamin a then there is a fortified food items vitamin a enriched commercially available in food Dalda, you may not be know, but it was just like a ghee that was a prepared, that was a added with vitamin A, that is called as a fortification of food items. So, dalda, milk, sugar, tea, cereal grains, bread and butter, all they were added with the vitamin A. The functions of vitamin A required for night vision to maintain the normal function of the glandular and epithelial tissues essential for normal skeletal and body growth it offers good resistance to infection then deficiency symptoms systemic manifestations are hyperkeratosis anorexia growth retardation general low resistance to infection ocular manifestations include night blindness congenital jerosis vitreous spot corneal jerosis and in this picture, you can see in night blindness, the two children, one uh, a girl and a boy, they are playing and you can see the other boy is sitting in the corner because he is not able to see into the dark. Now you can see the lighted, um, this lamp, so it is a dark and the child is not able to see. So this is a complaint that is called as a night blindness. So to, today we will start our uh, topic, just we have covered what is uh, parenchymatous cirrhosis, what is vitamin and what is uh, vitamin A. So our topic, this can be asked for your short note and why it is important? It is important from your preventing social medicine point as well as in your viva. And if any one of you want to sit in a chair of a medical officer, you should know all the national program. So it comes under the national program, just like uh, national program of immunization, then uh, diarrhea control, filaria, malaria, just like that in NPCB, national program for control of blindness, it is one of the preventive aspect in the national program. So ophthalmology, all the time I am telling you, it is a comprehensive eye care, preventive, promotive, curative and rehabilitative care. So this is one of the preventive aspect. So, gerophthalmia, the term gerophthalmia is reserved by the WHO and USAID committee in 1976 to cover the all ocular manifestations of vitamin A deficiency including not only the structural changes affecting the conjunctiva, cornea and occasional retina but also the biophysical disorders of retinal rods and cones function. So, this is called as a gerophthalmia. It occurs either due to dietary deficiency of vitamin A or its defective absorption from the gut. It has been recognized that vitamin A deficiency does not occur as an isolated problem but is almost invariably accompanied by protein, energy, malnutrition, PEM and infections. So in pediatrics also you know that which are the conditions that is a PEM, Quashir core disease. So you may be knowing in your pediatrics. So vitamin A deficiency along with protein energy malnutrition causes severe blinding coronal destruction. Most of the time vitamin A deficiency is precipitated by PEM and other diseases which precipitate malnutrition. Example that is a measles. Diarrhea, malaria or other acute illnesses in children. This blindness is termed as a nutritional blindness. Main factor is vitamin A deficiency. Vitamin A deficiency is a systemic disease that affects cells and organs throughout the body. 
the resultant changes in the epithelial architecture they are termed as keratinizing metaplasia the characteristics of ocular manifestations of vitamin A deficiency ranging from night blindness to corneal melting are termed as xerophthalmia at least 5 to 10 million children develop xerophthalmia every year xerophthalmia is largely limited to the first 4 to 6 years of life in india about 14000 preschool children suffer from vitamin A deficiency at any point of time 14 million preschool children have some damage to the vitamin A deficiency 3.350000 uh, or more preschool children become partially or totally blind every year from vitamin A deficiency 60% of these children die within a few months of going blind VAD or vitamin A deficiency is associated with an increase in the severity of infections particularly measles and diarrheal diseases Through synergium with measles infections, vitamin D deficiency contributes to the estimated 1.1 million childhood deaths from measles every year. Half of all childhood cornea blindness in developing countries is caused by vitamin D deficiency, and half of that is from added measles infection. Trauma is also one cause of childhood blindness. The prevalence in age groups of six months to six years. that is shown in this slide night blindness is more than 1% congenital neurosis is more than 0.5% vitro spot is seen more than 0.01% corneal ulcer 0.05% that is 5 in 10000 keratomalacia more than 5% that is 500 in 10000 children this is age group of 6 months to 6 years etiology of xerophthalmia results either from an inadequate supply of vitamin A or a defective absorption from the gut epithelial xerophthalmia is predominantly disease of children under 5 years of age just we have seen and that is seen in low socio economic strata people usually the child is ill nourished or marasmic just uh, we have seen it is a protein allergy malnutrition concurrent infection with measles microbial agents and herpes simplex may predispose the child to keratomalacia what is the main pathological change it is called as a epidermalization of the congenital epithelium with granular and horny layers then there is a destruction of blood blood cells so there is no mucus vicarious secretions from the meibomian gland is deposited on dry dull spots and there is a growth of corneary bacterium xerosis on the xerotic conjunctiva So WHO has classified vitamin A deficiency in 1976 the classification as X1 that is night blindness X1A congenital xerosis X1B bit dot spot X2 is corneal xerosis X3A that is corneal ulceration or affection of the corneal surface is less than 1/3 X3B is corneal ulceration affecting more than 1/3 of the cornea or ocular surface corneal surface XS is corneal scar due to xerophthalmia that is a healed scar healed corneal injury that is called as a corneal scar and XF that is xerophthalmic fundus so what is night blindness XN so it is the earliest symptom of xerophthalmia in children it has to be elicited by taking detailed history from the guardian or relative so many a times the mother generally she tells to the it can be a pediatrician or ophthalmologist she can say that the child is unable to see at dusk sandhya kal apan mhanto dusk sandhya kal often the child is brought with the complaint of unable to see at dusk or after sunset marathi madhe baryach velela ti aai asa sangte ki te umbra tech kalto umbra umbra means tela threshold asa mhanta umbra means there is a wooden log generally it was in old houses you can see a wooden log at the entry of the house so when the child wants to go out or come inside because of the darkness he stumbles on the wooden log tela umbartha asa marathit mhanta to there is a stumbling at the 
वुडन लॉ आणि ते आई मराठीमध्ये सांगेल त्या पिडियाटेशनला किंवा ऑप्शन नसला की घरात येताना किंवा घराच्या बाहेर जाताना सारखा ठेचकाळत असतो ही इज स्टम्बलिंग ऑल द टाइम्स ऍट डस्क और आफ्टर सनसेट समटाइम्स दिस इज टर्म्ड ऍज चिकन आईज वाय बिकॉज चिकन म्हणजे कोंबडीचं पिल्लू और कोंबडी चिकन दे लॅक रॉड्स अँड दस दे आर नाईट ब्लाइंड सो द नाईट ब्लाइंडनेस इज टर्म्ड ऍज चिकन आईज so in this picture just i have told you the boy is sitting in the corner he is not able to see at the night the first sign of vitamin deficiency presented with symptom only complaint of inability to see mother is a reliable person to identify the problem reversible condition at that this time if you are diagnosing the child as having a night blindness and started the treatment the child can see in the night also so it is a reversible condition preventable condition simple vitamin a administration can cure the patient then x1a this is called as a conjunctival cirrhosis the conjunctival cirrhosis is lack of luster of conjunctiva in the interpapillary fissure at temporal side you can see wrinkling this wrinkling is because of loss of elasticity again you can see the lusterless non vitable conjunctiva and it is described as from the book you can see it is called as an emerging like sand bags at a receding tide jar tumhi samudra var gela ani lat magari gelyanantar walu tumhala pani kami kami hot gelyanantar dry diste tala mantat the emerging like sand bags at a receding tide when the child ceases to cry rad radaycha thamble ki tumhala jo do ola dola ahe to ekdam korda disayla suruvat hote that is because of the conjunctival cirrhosis and these patches almost always involve the interpalpebral area at the temporal quadrants nasal quadrants also they are involved in more advanced cases the entire bulbal carotid may be affected typical cirrhosis may be associated with conjunctival thickening wrinkling and pigmentation then this x1b that is called as a bitot spot or some pronounce it as a bitot spot the bitot spot is a white foamy lusterless triangular black invariably situated on the bulbar conjunctiva tala masha che khavle asa apan marathi jar shiklele asel tar mait asel masha cha angavar je khavle astat तर त्याप्रमाणे ते दिसतं डोळ्यामध्ये कंजेंटायमध्ये दॅट इज अ बिटॉट स्पॉट इन युअर टेन्थ ऑर ट्वेल्थ स्टँडर्ड यू मे हॅव लर्न दिस बिटॉट स्पॉट इट इज अन एक्सटेन्शन ऑफ झिरॉटिक प्रोसेस सीन इन स्टेज एक्स वन ए द बिटॉट स्पॉट इज रेज सिल्वरी व्हाईट फोमी ट्रँगुलर पॅच ऑफ केरॅटेनाइज डिपिथिलियम सिच्युएटेड ऑन द बल्बर कंजेंटाय इन द इंटर पार्बर एरिया युजली बायोलॅट्रल अँड टेम्पोरल लेस फ्रिक्वेंटली इट इज सीन ऑन द नेझल साईड just we have seen then corneal cirrhosis this is a x2 the earliest change in the cornea is punctate keratopathy which begins in the lower nasal quadrant followed by haziness lusterless dry appearance of the conjunctiva is first seen near the inferior limbus thick keratinized plaques may form on the corneal surface the corneal cirrhosis responds within 2 to 5 days to vitamin a therapy and it returns to normal appearance by 1 to 2 weeks so the x2 according to the who classification x2 stage is also a reversible so vitamin a deficiency is a preventable and according to the stage it is a reversible also so a proper treatment and in timely treatment can prevent the child from going into blindness x3a and x3b this is called as a corneal ulceration or keratomalacia it is a late manifestation they indicate permanent destruction of a part or all of the corneal stroma resulting in permanent structural alteration so you know that when there is a change in the structure there is change in the function 
so when there is a change in the structure means after the healing there will be opacity there will be leukoma macula according to there can be grading of the opacity and the light will not travel the transparent cornea becomes non transparent so when there is a change in the structure there is a change in the function these ulcers are classically oval or round that is punctured out defects ulcer usually starts from slightly inferior nasal aspects then corneal ulceration sloughing of necrotic stroma leaves a large ulcer which may perforate and when you know if you have uh, got your lectures on cornea when there is a perforation if it is in front of the pupil then there is a corneal fistula if it is away from the pupillary area the iris comes into play it will come and gum at this perforated side so again there is a formation of antechamber and the patient may uh, get adherent leukoma and if it is in the center pseudo corneal formation and anterior staphyloma formation can occur then the last stage is xs that is called as a corneal scar or geophthalmic scar healing of stromal defects results in corneal scars of different densities and sizes which may or may not cover the pupillary area a detailed history is required to ascertain the type of corneal opacity they are generally usually bilateral that is because of vitamin d deficiency and indicate healed sequelae of prior corneal diseases related to vitamin d deficiency and as just i told they can have a different grades that is nebula macula or leukoma grades opacity and if there is a perforation of the cornea you can get an adherent leukoma then there is a, if you happen to see the fundus of the child this is called as a geophthalmic fundus the another name is humerus fundus the small discrete yellow dot seen in the peripheral fundus after dilatation of the pupil you are looking into the fundus of the eye they represent a focal depigmentation of the retinal pigment epithelium so if your yi is on your vitamin a deficiency the examiner can ask you what is humerus fundus so you have to tell it is the ophthalmic fundoscopic finding geophthalmic fundus is called as humerus fundus so what is the treatment the treatment approach is a preventive curative so geophthalmia is a medical emergency immediate administration of vitamin a with concomitant treatment of underlying systemic illnesses and treatment of protein energy malnutrition is important locally you can give artificial tears for this congenital cirrhosis and for keratomalacia full fledged treatment of bacterial corneal ulcer should be started this is a table that is a recommended by the who so children less than 12 months children more than 12 months or older and women with night blindness or bedot spot in child bearing age and men with corneal lesion so generally it is given in children less than 12 months this is a treatment schedule what like international unit on first day second day and repeat two to four weeks later generally vitamin is given orally but if the child is having diarrhea or vomiting you can go for a parental rule injection du shakta to mil injectable vitamin a so in children more than 12 months of age 2 lakh interdental unit first second day and repeat 2 to 4 weeks later for the child bearing age of a woman 10000 interdental unit for the night blindness daily for 2 weeks 14 divas apan manu ya 25000 interdental unit weekly for 4 weeks and for men with corneal lesion 2 lakh international unit on the first day second day and after 2 to 4 weeks this is a treatment then prophylaxis so how to prevent a child going into the night blindness or geophthalmia or keratomalacia so in infants 6 to 12 months of old age and any old child who weighs less than 8 kg that is 1 lakh international unit orally every 3 to 6 months 
children older than one year and under six years of age, two lakh international unit every six monthly. Lactating mother, twenty thousand international unit once at a delivery or during next two months. An infant less than six months, fifty thousand international unit orally before they attain the age of six months. This is for the prophylaxis. So you should know the schedule for. treatment as well as prophylaxis this is a revised schedule it is under the cssm program that is called as a child survival and safe motherhood the first dose of 1 lakh international unit it is given at the 9 months when you are giving a injection for measles the second dose is 2 lakh international unit at 18 months with a booster of dpt and oral polio vaccine and the third dose is 2 lakh international unit at 2 years of age this is under child survival and safe motherhood program the prophylaxis is done at high risk condition children with severe pem children with measles children with the diarrhea lower respiratory infections other acute infections they should receive 2 lakh international unit vitamin a orally at the time of diagnosis and the medium term approach that is food fortification with vitamin a fortified food is inexpensive stable virtually undetectable in food vehicle you have to select and it is acceptable to the community then long term approach you can this is an ultimate aim promotion of adequate intake of vitamin a dark, uh, dark uh, green leaf vegetables so eating habits has to be changed boiled mashed for infants combined with edible oil this can be given as a prophylaxis